What's poppin' everybody? Welcome to Tom and Joey Entertainment, aka TJENT. This is not real talk. This is not straight gaming. And I know you're what you're probably thinking. Don't worry, you're not having a stroke. You're not having a brain aneurysm. It's just me. It's just Joey. It's just the Joey part of the Tom and Joey. Tom is currently down in East Lansing celebrating his glorious one-year anniversary with his wonderful and super cool girlfriend. So congratulations to him. Golf clap, mazel tov to the happy couple. So because of that fact, I know we had part one of Real Talk episode nine, I believe it was, uh, yesterday on Tuesday. So what had to happen, I'll give you a quick spiel before we get this started. Tom had to go down state, so we just recorded the first part of the episode, so we the first topic of the episode, I should say, so we could get that video out on Tuesday. And then I had an idea that I've been wanting to do for a while, and really, it would it could only come to fruition if we got enough feedback and got enough comments and got enough questions on our Patreon page. So what I'm going to do today for you guys on this glorious Wednesday was something we're going to try to do once every month, and this is going to be this version of this episode of this segment that we're going to be doing for August of 2017. And this is going to be our comment response and AMA kind of th- situation. Now, this video in particular is going to be mostly comment responses because we don't have a lot of questions on our Patreon page. I think there's only one lonely AMA type question on our Patreon page, but we have plenty of comments to sift through and I'm going to respond to each and every one of them. Now, I provided kind of a, a typed up response on YouTube Uh, like a physical response on the YouTube page, like in the comments, but I'm going to kind of expand on, I picked out a few comments, I think around 20 or so that I'm going to respond to. So we're going to do that. And it's kind of be like an AMA and it's just going to be me and you, you and me, just a very intimate one-on-one conversation. You're going to get to know me. And like I said, we're, I want to do this once every month. If we can, if we can get enough questions and get enough comments and get enough feedback. So if you want to get involved on the next one, for the AMA for September, you can post any question you have whatsoever. Tom and I will answer whatever and anything that you want to know, pretty much, or anything that you want us to talk about, comments on, anything at all. Go to patreon.com slash T-J-E-N-T, where you can submit any question as long as you're donating one, two, five, or ten dollars, as long as you're one of our awesome patrons of our seven, hint hint, two of the seven are Tom and I. So if you want to become a patron today. And post any question you want for our next AMA for the month of September. You can do so on that patreon.com slash T-J-E-N-T. And one more thing before we get started. Full disclosure, you can probably notice that in each one of our videos, we each have a device in front of us. My computer, my glorious Service Pro 1, that is about five years old, records the audio through Audacity, through our microphone. So we get the audio capture that way. And then Tom's laptop is able to control the camera because, quick side note, Cameras like this, we have a Canon, and cameras like this in the UK, it's some random obscure law where cameras in the UK cannot record more, I think it's 12 minutes, I think, I believe it's 12 minutes, cannot record more than 12 minutes at one time without stopping unless it's a camcorder, because if it goes past that point, then it's considered a camcorder, and then camera manufacturers like Canon, like the one we have, are not allowed to sell their cameras as D, uh, DSR cameras or DLSR or DLR or DSR, something like that. But yeah, they're not allowed to sell them and not allowed to call them non camcorders if they record longer than 12 minutes. So, with that being said, as you can see, I don't have Tom's device here. So, quick caveat before we get started every 12 minutes or so, it, the camera will shut off and then turn back on and like shut off the recording and then turn it back on. So depending on how long this video goes, it could go upwards of 30 minutes. So it could happen three times. I'm going to keep on talking because I don't have an ability to monitor it and make sure um, that it starts and stops, but it's happens super quickly. I'll just kind of throw a splash screen up just to say that we're dealing with technical difficulties or something, but you'll still be able to hear me and you'll still be able to get the audio. So no worries there. You'll still be able to hear me. And the audio is really the main thing. But I just wanted to say that in the beginning so you don't think that anything's up or think that we're having technical difficulties that we don't plan on. So I know it's super lame with how this camera is set up and how the UK laws are set up. It's super random. When we first got this camera, we had to read up on it. It was very random and very obscure and unfortunate. But to this far, we've been able to manage it pretty well. And you probably haven't even noticed that we've been starting and stopping our recordings really kind of every 10 minutes or so Tom will start and stop it and you probably haven't noticed it because hey that's just how good we are so 
Without further ado, let's swan dive into this comment response and AMA with your boy, Joey Brokes, as I am one of your hosts of Real Talk with Tom and Joey. So the first comment, I had to I had to snip it, all these comments, and then throw them on my phone so I could uh, read them off to you. So the first comment is we're going all the way back to our one of our Real Talk episodes. I think it was episode two when we did the topic about do movie ratings really matter? And we have our first responder, Tanner Stewart. He says, quote, Censorship as a whole is an outdated standard. With the availability and exposure of the internet, younger and younger kids are getting more and more desensitized to explicit material. Associations like the MPAA need to retool their definition of mature. And I couldn't agree more with that because especially when we talked about movie ratings and we talked about, in particular, the amount of violence that people are able to get away with on TV. Like you watch shows like The Walking Dead with that gruesome bat scene. And if you don't know what we're talking about, If you have the stomach for it, go ahead and look it up on YouTube. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's very, very gruesome to say the least. And if you watched American Horror Story, American Horror Story Hotel, that shit is ridiculous. That is literally a porno that's extremely violent. The one with Lady Gaga, the season with Lady Gaga. The first season, like, there's this, full spoilers. Okay, you've had enough time. So in the first episode of American Horror Story Hotel is, they have this scene where, Lady Gaga and her boo or her man bring in a couple people and then they're all laying in bed about to have a foursome, I think. And Lady Gaga and the other dude slit their throats and like then have sex with each other in their blood. And this is on cable TV. This is on FX where anyone and everyone can watch this whenever they want. It's not on cable. It's not on HBO where you have to pay. It's not on something where you have to verify your age. Like that helps at all anyways. Go on a porn site and be like, oh yeah, I'm totally... 80 years old, even though I'm a 15 year old and my parents on my parents' computer, that shit doesn't matter anyways. So the fact that we can get away with so much violence on TV, but God forbid you show a little boob action or you show any, you know, male counterpart, even though no one on earth wants to see that. It just, everybody goes up in arms and then everybody just freaks out. But Hey, show as many blood, as much blood and as many heads getting cut off as you possibly can. So, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Tanner, and thanks for the comment. You're going to be seeing a lot of responses from Tanner. And, yeah, because he's a, he's a very passionate contributor, and we could not appreciate him anymore. T. Stu is one of our great, great friends and a lover of the show, and we could not appreciate his support anymore. So, to the next comment, and I have a few of these. These are our top five. We had our top five TV shows, and then we had our top five breakfast cereals that we did with Ian. So uh, a few people commented with their top fives of their, their respective category. So I'm going to go through them here. Brad Van Adder, another Patreon supporter, shout out, provided his comment. He His top five is number one, Breaking Bad. And that was on my honorable mentions. Still, I'm not going to argue with you. Breaking Bad is a fantastic show. Only, I think it was, was it three or four seasons? I can't remember if it was three or four seasons, but I thought it was a little short, especially with how good that show was. But... God knows how long Brian Cranston could pull off that character. He just did it fantastically. And fantastically, that's a word, right? Fan, Yeah, that's a word. So yeah, I mean, I love Brian Cranston in general. He's an hilarious actor. I don't know if you've seen the Family Guy skit where they uh, show Brian Cranston and he and he's like, oh, Brian Cranston got another Emmy and they show and he just sneezes and they give him the they give him the Emmy award and he just looks at the camera and says, thank you. And he just stares at the camera. Absolutely hilarious. Brian Cranston has a great sense of humor, especially because... It is kind of right that they give him awards for pretty much anything he does. But, above all, he's a fantastic actor. Number two, The Sopranos. And I will admit, I never got into The Sopranos. Never even... I don't even think I watched any of it. Not even bits and pieces. But, I do, however, get into classic gangster movies and TV shows alike as well. And I got really into The Godfather, the video game. Which is weird, because usually any video game that's based off of a movie or a TV show is going to be shitty. So... I don't have an I don't have a place to argue with you there, but from what I've heard and read and reviews and how that show is revered, I definitely agree with or I'm okay with Sopranos being number two. And number three is The Office. I mean, this is on my honorable mentions. The Office was an amazing show. When Steve Carell left, that's when it kinda dipped. I totally thought Will Ferrell was gonna do well, but he ended up being kind of a shitty character. And I think that was more the production's fault because it didn't line up with his personality, his character, along with Will Ferrell's personality and like acting uh, trends or acting history, that just didn't really uh, mesh well. And he has number four, Entourage, and number five, Narcos. Narcos, 
I hands down agree with you. I'm surprised that I didn't even put that in my honorable mentions. That was definitely a misstep by me. Narcos is one of my favorite shows, especially on Netflix. Now, some people will rip on the amount of subtitles you have to read, which is an outrageous amount. But the dude that plays Pablo Escobar is a great actor. All the different scenes that they go through and how everything that they portray in that show actually legitimately happened is way awesome. And then they just came out with a new season where they're covering the Cali cartel instead of the Medellin cartel, which was Pablo Escobar was in charge of. So I'm about halfway through that season, but it's just fantastic. And I love Narcos. And like I said, we're at 10 minutes and 30 seconds right now. So look about the 12 minute range where that camera is going to flip. And this is Real Talk with Tom and Joey. This is full disclosure. I want to be as real as possible with you guys. Just be an intimate one-on-one conversation. And I want you to know when we have technical difficulties. And like I said, you'll still hear my audio, so it's not a big deal. And then he says, honorable mention SpongeBob and It Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Prison Break. Never got into Prison Break, but SpongeBob and It's Always Sunny. A-okay there, especially SpongeBob. Now we have Jimmy Hi-Fi guest. Now, this is also a Patreon supporter, Connor Gartland. He told me that that was his YouTube username. He commented on a few things and then I responded to him, totally not aware that he was Connor Gartland. And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, he texted me. He's like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Jimmy Hi-Fi guest, that's uh, that's a me. I was like, oh, okay. So he has number one. And he says, first of all, disclaimer, if we're not counting Game of Thrones, obviously number one. And he says, Supernatural is his number one. Another show that I never got into, but heard nothing but great things. Number two, Narcos. Fantastic. Number three, Archer. I don't, I think I put this in my honorable mentions. If, it, if I didn't, it was an absolute shame, and I am fully embarrassed about not putting it in my honorable mentions. Archer is one of my favorite shows ever. The character that plays Archer, John H. Benjamin, one of the best voices that I've ever heard in any show, period. Like, his voice alone, and and it's funny because he didn't even have to do a voice or an accent or an inflection or anything. It's literally just him talking as Archer, as the character, and he's absolutely hysterical. Everything he does and says is hilarious. So he has number four, That 70s Show. I never really got into that either, but it was definitely one of those classic shows that I knew a lot of people that got into it. And then number five, South Park. Obviously, you're not going to hear any argument from me there. South Park is hilarious, and the new season starts tomorrow, or technically today, if you're watching this on Wednesday when it goes up. So he says, honorable mentions, Stranger Things, great show. Next season's, I think, coming out in late October, I believe. And I watched, it's a funny anecdote, I got, I messed up my leg super, super hard playing soccer, and I was incapacitated for a few weeks, actually, a few, well, about a week where I couldn't legitimately, it took me about a half an hour to get the, up the steps, so needless to say, I was not moving a lot. So it was one of the weekends where I was down in North Carolina staying with my brother and his wonderful wife, shout out. He, uh, They were away for the weekend, and I was taking care of the house and their adorable puppy. So I decided to put my feet up and watch the entire season of Stranger Things in one day. So yeah, I uh, love that show and ruined it for myself all in one day, in one sitting. But hey, when you love a show, you love a show. So thank you, Connor, for your contribution. And I don't know if I thank Brad personally, but thank you, Brad, for your contribution. Then Adam Plum said it has his top five TV shows, another Patreon supporter, another constant contributor. Thank you, as always. Adam says, number one is Shameless. Number two is Mad Men. Number three is Seinfeld. Number four is Friday Night Lights. And number five is The Sopranos. Seinfeld, I never really got into sitcoms. I don't... I don't know what it is about sitcoms, but for me, it's I don't like being told that I need to laugh. You know what I mean? I like with a sitcom, I don't need to be like when they have those laugh cues with the audience. I just can't stand that because I love I love shows that are just everything is quiet. They just have the audio, they just have the jokes, and you know when to laugh because you know when the jokes are funny. So it's not like a sitcom audience telling you to laugh. And I definitely like how it does that, or I definitely don't like how that's one of the reasons why I never got into Seinfeld was because it was a sitcom. That's what I was getting at. So then Friday Night Lights, another show. Watched it all the way through. Great show. Fantastic. Definitely, I don't, it's definitely not one of those shows where I would like watch it through and then maybe like a few months or maybe a year down the road, I'd watch it all the way through again. Definitely one of those shows where you watch it once all the way through and never kind of, not one of those revisit shows. You know what I mean? But still a fantastic show nonetheless. He says, honorable mentions, Friends. How I Met Your Mother and Home Improvement. Friends and Home Improvement, those are new ones. Those seem kind of older shows, but hey, you like what you like. Adam Plus said, thank you for your contribution. Tanner Stewart, as always, T. Stew, constant contributor. 
Number one is The Office. Number two is Heroes. Not really sure I'm familiar with the show Heroes. I believe it's most likely a superhero show, if I had to bet, I had to guess. Then he has number three, Rick and Morty. Another show that I've just heard nothing but good things about, but I just never got into. And then number four, Marco Polo, which is odd that you put it in your top five because, I mean, I'm, I'm a review connoisseur, I guess you could say, but I've read nothing but shitty reviews about Marco Polo and the fact of, I remember reading an article that the headline was, the Net- Netflix most expensive show gets canceled after three we- after three seasons. And it was apparently Marco Polo was apparently uh, Netflix's most expensive show. And I remember watching like the first three or four episodes and it was just so slow and so sl- like slowly paced that I just couldn't get into it. And I thought I would with that type of time period because I kind of get into stuff like that, but I never could get into it. And then he has number five, Sherlock, another show that I ever got into and ever, I didn't even think I saw any bits and pieces of it either. So three out of the five shows that you have, I've ever even seen. Well, Marco Polo I watched. Never mind. Two out of the five shows that I've ever even seen. So a very interesting top five at that. T. Stu, as always, thank you. So we have another. This is on our Jake Paul video. Brad just had a quick comment. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I didn't even know that that Paul kid existed until this video. People actually follow that garbage? Question mark. Society is pathetic. Shame on you for this free advertising. Uh, I, I can't disagree with you there, Brad. Jake Paul is is definitely a personality and a half, to to say the least. With all the stuff that's going when he was dropped by Disney, the the lawsuits he got into when he accused his neighbors of loosening the tires on his car. That was just an outrageous claim. And I forget what was the most recent thing that he did. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've seen some of his videos and especially his brother Logan, some of those videos. And it's like, I'm sorry, but it, Jake Paul, if, if you have a video of a kissing contest with your girlfriend and your dad participates, whoo, doggy. All right. All right. Go to the top five breakfast cereals. Brad Van Adder back-to-back comments. His number one is Frosted Flakes. Number two is Honey Smacks. Number three is Golden Grams. Number four is Reese's Puffs. Shout out to Tom. Tom would love that pick. And then number five is Life Cinnamon. Now, I've never had Life Cinnamon. I believe I've had Life, regular Life before. But I, as always, am a cinnamon aficionado. So anything, you can add cinnamon to... Hot sauce, you could add cinnamon to dog shit. I'd probably eat it. Probably not. I, I I wouldn't eat cinnamon dog shit. But cinnamon cereal, on the other hand, now you piqued my interest. So I'll definitely have to give it a shot. And Golden Grams, definitely, definitely a fan of Golden Grams. I'm glad to see that on your top five. Brad, as always, thank you for your contribution. Then we have finally a new one, a new non-Patreon supporter. And this fantastic, fantastic lady has been with us since the beginning, since we've had double-digit subs, since we were back in Tom and Joey gaming days, back with our, our USB mics and our webcams, Miss Christy, like I said, shout out, very big supporter. We love and appreciate the support. And her top five is Frosted Flakes, hands down, great cereal. Fruit Loops, Marshmallow Treasures. And this is one of the ones that I pointed out to her in my response in the comment. I've never even heard of Marshmallow tre- Treasures, but Marshmallow in general is kind of like cinnamon, where it's to the point where you put marshmallows in anything and you're going to pique my interest and I'm mostly going to love it. Then her number four is regular Cheerios. Love it. Regular Cheerios is significantly underrated. They need People need to get into regular Cheerios more. It's healthy. It's great for your heart. Add some bananas. It's delicioso, dare I say it. So, great choice. And then five, crispy rice. Now, I'm not sure I know what crispy rice is, I know what Rice Krispies are, and the regular original Rice Krispies, for some reason, me with cereal, the originals of stuff, like original Captain Crunch, loved it. Original uh, Corn Flakes, eh, you're pushing the boundaries there. You're definitely pushing it. But original Cheerios, original Rice Krispies. Um, let's see if there's any originals that I'm missing. Original Fruit Loops? No, they're always Fruit Loops. Anyways, I just like the originals of cereals. I don't know why, but I've just always been a fan. And regular Cheerios, I forget where it exactly was in my top five, but I definitely think it was in my top three. So cheers to that. And Miss Christy, thank you again for your contribution, and thank you as always for your support. So then we move on. Oh, no, we're still in the top five breakfast cereals. Tea Stew, third comment of the day, or maybe fourth. 
support. I don't know. I lose track. Teach Studios support us so much and contribute so much that I love you, man. Number one is Honeycomb. Number two is Waffle Crisp. Number three is Count Chocula. Excellent. Excellent choice. Number four is Reese's Puffs. Shout out to Tom. Number five is Honey Nut Cheerios. And that's another one that I am a fan of. However, if I was going to branch off of the original Cheerios, I'd definitely rather go Apple Cinnamon. What do you know? Cinnamon. Something I like. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? But Honeycomb, and I put this in my response to my comment. I remember this specifically. Honeycomb, extremely underrated. I didn't even put it in my honorable mentions, I think, when we did the topic itself. But extremely underrated and absolutely delicious. As weird as it sounds, I just love the texture of it, especially when you combine it with milk. Obviously, because, I mean, I've eaten cereal dry before, straight out of the box, just handfuls, just the shovel. She's my hand as a shovel. I might as well just tip it up upside down and use a funnel at that point. But honeycomb, like I said before, I think I remember saying this in video. If you can diversify your portfolio as a cereal where I can eat you with milk and eat you dry and out of the box just and be just as delicious, you're going to be on my top five. So T. Stu, as always, thank you for the contribution. And then we have another new one, another non-Patreon supporter. And this is kind of just a general comment. I wanted to point this out because this was another fan that's been with us since the beginning, since we've been in Tom and Joey Gaming. And they're still sticking with us, even though we had that, like, I think it was like three or four month break. Was it three or four months? I forget what it was. Or two or three months where we can where we transition from gaming to the podcast form where we are now, Real Talk with Tom and Joey. Funny Gamer, he says, Hello, I can't wait to see where your channel goes. Been here since 20 subs. Keep up the good work, man. And I just wanted to point this out. I don't really have a response to it, aside from the fact of just saying thank you. I know we're, we're a really small channel. I mean, we might have upwards of almost 1,000 subs, but we, we're relatively small in terms of the views that we get and the attention we get. And regardless of how many views we're getting, and regardless of how many people are viewing our content and enjoying our content, we still push out the best content we possibly can. And we still try as hard as we possibly can to give you guys the best content we possibly can. Said that four times. So you clearly get, I mean what I say. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. So I just wanted to point out that comment because it was really cool how he specifically pointed out that he's been with us since 20 subs and been with us since Time of Joy Gaming. And if you can join a channel that is strictly Let's Plays, and for those of you that don't know what Let's Plays are, it's pretty much just... You play a game and comment or provide commentary while you're playing it, and then that's the video. So that's kind of like what a Let's Play is. So if you stick with us from where we go to Let's Plays to full-blown random-ass topics podcast, and you're still sticking with us, we love the support, and we could not appreciate it more. So Funny Gamer, thank you. So we go to our fast food mascot battle royale, which this this video didn't get enough attention. This was my topic, so I'm a little salty about it. Didn't give it enough tension as I thought it would, but nonetheless, it was still a fun topic to do, and that was one that we did with Ian, and we're going to try and get Ian on more shows when... Yeah, you'll, you'll find out in the future. We're, we're going to try and get Ian on, uh, on more of our shows because God knows that was hysterical and very entertaining. So Brad says, in terms of our battles, he says, the Hamburglar versus the BK King, it's like David and Goliath. He says, quote, King is too big and won't be able to move with the Hamburglar. The Hamburglar would dodge all of his swings and eventually tire him out, then go in for the kill. We know he has great jumping ability and agility as a whole from knobbing all those burgers from McDonald's. (laughs) Then he would lose. Then he would lose to the Little Caesars guy in the finals. We all know that we were favorites of the Little Caesars guy. I put him all the way in the finals, and my vote to beat the BK King was the Little Caesars man. But you definitely make up some pretty big points with the Hamburglar. And we all know how big of a fan I am of stealth, just in all facets. So you definitely got some good points. The Hamburglar, I mean, he's gone this far. God knows how long McDonald's has been around. And he's still not in prison. Hell, he even wears a prison jumpsuit around as his normal everyday attire. And nobody's figured out that he's escaped from prison. I don't even know if he's been in prison. I think he just wears the the prison jumpsuit just for fun. So he's wearing a prison jumpsuit. He's going around seeing hamburgers for, I don't even know when McDonald's was started, like I said. For how long? Double digit amount of years, decades, have you. And has yet to be caught by the authorities. And needless to say, we have the technology to catch him. But he has still avoided being captured. So, I I get your point, Brad. But to me, I mean, you did say he would lose to the Little Caesars guy in the finals. Which is acceptable because, to me, Little Caesars guy 
just beats everybody. So you make some good points. And as always, thank you for the contribution. So this is kind of a little bit more of a serious comment. This is kind of a long one. This is, again, for Br- from Brad. And I kind of wanted to respond to this one because I provided a comment response to him. But I kind of wanted to just talk about this general topic and expand on it a little bit. So Brad says, this is, and this is a long one. Be prepped for it. He says, quote, as an open Trump supporter, I was extremely disappointed in our president's comments. And this is in reference to Charlottesville, um, our video when we had our reactions to Charlottesville and the hor- horrific rallies that were going on down there with the Nazi flags and the Confederate symbols and all that, the white supremacist rally that was going on in Charlottesville, Virginia. And this was in response to Trump's comments when Trump didn't necessarily condemn the white supremacists. And it was to the point where you can make an argument where he almost, with his words, he almost supported what they did to the point where, I mean, if you understand politics as a politician, if you don't straight up deny something and condemn it, then you're supporting it because you know full well what you're saying and the words that you say. And especially as the president of the United States, every single word and detail is written and scrutinized and detailed. A detail is detailed indeed, but above all, it's just scrutinized to the highest level. So I digress. He says, quote, as an open Trump supporter, I was extremely disappointed in our president's comments and honestly pissed me off. However, you mentioned these people came out because they feel they have a platform to do so, which I agree with 100%. And here's the part where people point fingers and blame Trump and shout, he's a racist, he's a bigot, blah, blah, blah. Don't you think it's the media's, the media, liberals, leftists, etc., who voice their opinions so loud that it changed and changed the mindset of the United States and world for that matter? Trump is not a racist. Yet people label him as such to the extent where these neo-Nazis felt it was finally okay to come out of hiding from whatever rock they were under. The left will never accept it because they never take the blame for anything. They're perfect. Just ask them. <laughs> I would never blame someone else for someone else's hate and beliefs, but the platform was created by the leftists, not Donald Trump. And I, I appreciate you when you said you condemned his his words and you, it actually made you mad because I know you're a Trump supporter and obviously one of my best friends. I love you. So that shit doesn't matter. As always, we preach on the show that I don't give a shit who you vote for. Just explain to me why you did and know why you did. And don't just do it for no reason. That's my biggest thing. Believe believe in whatever you want to believe, but be able to back it up with evidence, with facts, with your own knowledge of the situation and a diverse knowledge of the situation, not just boiler points or boilerplate stuff and bullet point stuff. But mainly what I wanted to say in my in terms of my reaction to this was I, I get what you're saying. And when I when we talked about this topic, I talked about how the media on the left if you're if you're generalizing, you could have the media on the left, which is CNN, and the media on the right, and Fox News. And I think both media spectrums are to blame. That's why I trust all my news from the Associated Press and Reuters. Which, if you want to know where to get verified information and where to tr- a trusted news source that you can trust with anything that they pu- they publish, go to the Associated Press and go to Reuters because they are excellent organizations. But the only thing that I disagree with your statement, and and Brad, like I said, I love you, love your support. Very much appreciate it. But the only thing I disagree with your comment there is that I don't like when people, whether it's left or right, whether it's liberals or conservatives, I don't like when people generalize other people in groups. So let's say I align more with people that I guess you would say that you would generalize as the left or liberals. But there's so many things that I don't go to the extreme of because there's extreme on both sides. I mean, you have the extreme on the right where you have the Charlottesville rally, but then you have extreme on the left where, and I'm not saying Black Lives Matter is an extreme left, but when you had those riots in Baltimore, you had people that were maybe saying that they represented Black Lives Matter, which in terms of the group and like the heads of the group, I'm sure they would disown them with the actions that they took. But like I said in the video, you have people that were looting liquor stores and flipping over cop cars and sending shit on fire. And it's like, That doesn't help your cause. Whatever you're trying to change, whatever you're trying to make a point for people to think about and for people to want to be more consciously and know stuff about, flipping over cop cars and looting liquor stores is not going to get the job done. Instead, why don't you walk peacefully and preach for police accountability? Because, I mean, this is kind of branching off into another topic, but the main cause that started Black Lives Matter was the way that police treat or that the habit of the way the police treat African Americans on not just them alone but just on a grander scale the 
the amount of where police are interacting with African Americans, the scale of which they're, they're treated unfairly is higher than what they would with whites, pretty much. So that was their main cause. But my main thing is, and I totally agree with the cause because some of these things, especially the one that sticks out the most to me was, um, shoot, what was his name? Uh, the guy that says, I can't breathe. Ah, uh, shoot, I can't, I can't remember what his name was. But the policeman, I mean, he was on the street corner in New York doing literally nothing wrong. And he was just standing there trying to have a conversation with the police. And the cop takes him in a headlock in a forbidden and banned move by the police force, I might have you, and chokes him out and ends up killing the guy for doing nothing. Now, shit like that, that is simply outrageous. And my biggest thing is, the thing you have to establish is police accountability because you talk about body cameras and there's so many cops out there that want body cameras because it's like, look, we want to be able to do our job without having to worry about people twisting things and thinking that one situation is another. So you have so many of these cops that want to have body cameras because it's like, I do my job right and I do my job morally and representing the law and not abusing it. So I want people to see what's happening in my day-to-day life because I want them to know that it's verified that I follow the rules. So you have, my biggest thing is that there's certain policemen out there and certain, probably as much as police departments in certain areas where they think that no matter what they do, to an extent, the they are not going to be punished for it. And that's my biggest thing is because it's not, I mean, I won't get into talk about racism because there's racism that exists everywhere, whether it's system system level racism or system wide racism throughout the entire police force that I'm not going to get into that. I don't have an opinion on, but in terms of what the actual cause is of these problems, and I think it's police accountability rather than just pure racism, because you got to think that they just do these actions and do these things because, okay, then something ends up happening where the, uh, the criminal or maybe it's not even a criminal, just the innocent civilians end up, ends up dying and they go to trial and then they end up getting acquitted or the charges getting ended up dropped. So you have these police officers that do these terrible things and they get off free and clean. So you have other police officers that look at that and think that they can do the same thing. Whether they think it's right or wrong, they're to an extent, it gives them an excuse almost. And my biggest thing is, especially with you have certain situations, and another one that sticks out in my mind is that video where the dude was running away and the cop put like nine bullets into his back while he's running away. And it's like, I'm sorry, straight up, if I'm going to be super real, real on real talk, if you're a police officer and you can't handle yourself in a situation where a perp is coming at you with a weapon, whether it, unless it's a gun. Obviously, if it's a gun, you have warranted use to use your gun. But if someone's coming at you with a knife or any other weapon that's not a gun, and you have to use force with a gun to the point where it becomes deadly and you're shooting for the kill, I'm sorry, you should not be a part of the police force because I don't want people in that position to deal with pressure situations like that. You should be able to, at, at the least, you've seen so many stories from overseas where police officers will, will shoot perps in the legs and stuff. And I'm sorry, but if a criminal is coming at you with a knife and you put a bullet in his knee or any part of his leg, I'm sorry, he's not going to be running at you anytime soon. And you'll be able to catch him without killing him and without abusing your power. So I, I branched off into police brutality. But nonetheless... Brad, I appreciate your comment, and my general point was, I don't like when people group other people based on a generality of beliefs. So, yes, I am. I align myself more with liberal, I voted for the Democratic Party, but I wouldn't consider myself a leftist or on the left. There's certain people that are bad on each sides, and those people who we need to talk about. Not groups, individual people. That's what we need to talk about, because individual people hold their beliefs. They don't hold beliefs for a general amount of people. People on the on the super far left, I, I mean, some celebrities that are just outrageous with some of the shit that they tweet and say, I don't align with that at all, even though that I might align with them, let's say, on climate change. I don't align with them on so many other things, especially when it comes to social issues. And then you have far right, like Ann Coulter or something, where I disagree with absolutely everything she says, and everything she said is outrageous, but it comes back to the point where I always want to listen to either sides, because the more perspective you get the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to expand your knowledge and your horizons. So it's definitely an interesting situation. And Brad, I appreciate your comment. And especially as a Trump supporter, the way that you're able to communicate logically and 
calmly and not by just screaming at the other group or screaming on either end is honorable and I very much appreciate it. So thank you for your contribution. So let's see here. We are at 35 minutes. Wow. I just, I just, I like to ramble. Obviously, I mean, if you've heard our episodes up to this point, you know I like to talk. So I just wanted to get interactions with you guys. So let's see. Let's see here. I pulled all the comments, so I'm kind of sifting through the ones that I, I kind of want to answer to. Oh, this is the one I wanted to answer to specifically. He says, Big Gaiman, another new comment. He says, Hey, man, you both sound amazing. What kind of setup do you have? This is kind of what I want for my podcast. At the mo- at the minute, me and my friend are cramped over one mic and a Zoom H1N recorder. Um. Dude, totally get your situation. Like I said before, Tom and Joey Gaming, we were at 20 subs. Tom and I had webcams and Yeti mics that totaled about $70. And uh, it was not very high quality audio and video. But nonetheless, our equipment, I had it written up here. Just give me one sec. So our main equipment, as you can see, this wonderful mic that I have, it makes my voice just sound so, so great. This is a Shure SM7B. I won't say the exact price. Because, you know, I'm not necessarily proud of how much I spend on this mic, but it's worth every penny, and you get what you pay for because you listen to my voice, and it's just clear as day. But this is the Shure SM7B, and Tom's mic is the Rode Procaster, R-O-D-E, Procaster, like podcaster, but pro. Get it? That's Tom's mic. And our camera, like I said before, is a Canon EOS Rebel T3i. And shit, I mean, I don't even know if it's running right now because I have no way to monitor it, so... If it, to this point, if there's no video and you just see audio, I apologize, but you're still getting the audio, so that's all that matters. And then finally, our mixer is a Bay Ringer, Bay Ringer, B-E-H-R-I-G-E-R, Xenix, I don't think that's, I don't think that's how you say it, that's the depression pill, X-E-N-Y-X, USB mixer. So we have two of our mics and we have XLR cords, obviously, that we plug into the mixer and then you have to have some sort of program, but I use Audacity and it's completely 100% free and you can run it pretty much on any device that can run Audacity that you can record on. So I I mean, this is like I said before, this is my Surface Pro 1. This is five years. I think they're coming out with the Surface Pro 5. So this is Gen 1 of potentially five generations of computers. So this thing is old as shit and it's still be able to record just fine. So as long as you have audacity and I said, you don't have to go extreme. If you want to start a podcast, we kind of went all out because our thought process was it's an investment to the point where I'm not going to have to upgrade my mic for really ever. As long as I take care of it. And I always take care of my stuff. So upwards of 10 years, I'm going to have the same mic. So yeah, it's a lot at first, but at the same time, it's an investment. So if you spend a little extra on the mics and the camera, we had to upgrade safely with our cameras as well, like I said, because we have webcams. But if you go all out at at first, a lot of people will advise you not to spend a lot of money. And I don't advise you to spend a lot of money by all means. But don't feel bad if you want to because it's an investment to the point where this equipment that you're acquiring and paying a pretty decent money for is going to last you a super long time. So don't worry at all if you want to spend the extra money. So yeah, that's our equipment. And now that I have it written down and everything, we're going to put it in the video description below in each one of our videos from now on. So, Tanner Stewart, this is part of our top five favorite games. He commented, so far my top game of 2017 is PUBG. And if you watch our straight gaming, you know I am a huge fan of PUBG, otherwise known as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. He said it brings tactical gameplay and the need for constant communication with your team to a whole new level. Now for the rest of 2017, I'm pretty underwhelmed. I have to say, Tanner, I uh, I uh, disagree with you there. Just a little bit. Respectfully disagree. But Tanner and I like a few different games, and that's why I want you to contribute because we want to know what kind of games you play because everyone plays different games, and I want to play some new ones. So he says, I'm kind of underwhelmed, underwhelmed with the game release schedule. I'm really only excited for Destiny 2, and I had lots of fun with Destiny on Xbox, so it's about time they get ported over to PC. And that's a great point, because this is the first time that Destiny is on PC, and I played... I I didn't play the beta. Unfortunately, I downloaded the beta, and then wasn't able to play it that night, and then it closed the next day, so I wasn't able to play it. But I saw a few videos of Destiny on PC, and holy shit. Like, it looks great on Xbox, but the capabilities that you have with a PC... and, and, and People sometimes don't understand where it's like, oh, how come PC is so much better, like so much better graphics than consoles? Think about it like this. An awesome PC, my and I built my PC because my 
major is computer science. I'm going into computer programming and software development. So my computer is my livelihood pretty much. So I decided to invest some money into it. And I spent, full disclosure, I spent about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars for my PC. And that's the difference because you buy an Xbox, let's say four hundred dollars minus the Kinect, because I know the Xbox One came with the Kinect at first and it was five hundred. So let's say a console's worth four hundred, I think that's what the PS4 was worth too. So you have a four hundred dollar piece of hardware compared to a fifteen hundred dollar piece of hardware. And the graphics card alone is about as much as the system. Not to mention you have the graphics card and the CPU are pretty much the main components of what's making your game look and run the way it does. So the CPU and the, the graphics card alone are both going to be about the price of a console. So they're both going to be about over $400 each. So that's why PC games are able to look as gorgeous as they do. And I don't blame you for wanting to play De uh, Destiny on PC. I know you're a PC gamer in general. So I don't blame you for wanting to wait. It comes out, I think, at the end of October but it should be very, very sick. So let's see here. All right, we'll get to the final question. The final question here as we're at 40 minutes, and this is our one and only question, AMA question on our Patreon page. And remember, if you want to get in on the next AMA or comment response video, depending on how many questions we have, of for the month of September, which we'll do next month at some point, like I said, I want to do these about once a month, judging by how much feedback and how much uh, we're able to generate and how much responses we're able to get. So if you want to contribute to the next AMA, whether it's me or Tom, we might have, might have put Tom on the hotspot here and put him in front of the camera and have him answer questions if you want to ask him something specifically. So go to patreon.com slash T-J-E-N-T where you can respond to either of us or, I mean, ask us questions. So just kind of put something in the, so we know it's not a topic suggestion. Um, although you have to be donating $5 to get the ability to suggest a topic for real talk. So if you're donating at one or two, $1 or $2 a month on our Patreon page, you can post any question on there and just label it like maybe at the top, put AMA and then put one of our names. So we know who the question is directed to or put both of our names. If you just want us to answer them both or you want us both to answer it. So just do that. Go to our Patreon page, donate one, two, five or $10 and get your question in. And you'll get yourself on the next AMA, which is for next month. But Tanner's question is, and this is a question that I've wanted to answer my entire life. I don't think a more important question has ever been asked in the, in the history of AMAs. And I'm 100% serious. And I'm not sarcastic at all. And you'll know once I read this question, which is from Tanner Stewart on patreon.com slash TJNT. All right, I'll stop the land. Tanner asks... Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? <sighs> Man, I don't think I've ever had more pressure on my shoulders ever before than the answer to this question. And I was thinking about it on my way home because I saw this question yesterday and I, was, and I wanted to generate kind of an answer. And my thing is, is that one big thing is way easier, especially if you're talking as much as 100 duck sized horses holy shit i don't even want to i don't even want to know because ducks are not small i mean they're not ants you're not fighting 100 ants you're not fighting even like 100 mice or like squirrels or something ducks are are pretty decently sized so if you have a duck sized horse with horse strength I and mean, we all know horses are fucking jacked you look at any of those horses on like the kentucky derby or something they go into the the, the, the gates and they're just ripped like they are absolutely jacked so i would not want to deal with a hundred of those whether they're a size of the duck or not you're even smaller because yeah you can kick 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 as much as you as much as you want but i'm thinking about 20 to 25 that i punt across the field i'm gonna be getting super tired and to the point where all i need is one shot because you look at any movie every td show that a bunch of little things conquer a big thing all i need is one shot and then they just take over and i feel like that would be the hundred size horses, that's what they would do to me. But again, horses don't have the ability to fly. However, if you have a duck sized horse or no horse, si yeah, a horse sized duck, you're talking a, a duck that is as big as a horse that can fly. So you're pushing like game of Thrones level at this point, like game of Thrones dragons level. Now this is where it gets tricky because I would be able to, 
if I'm going into a situation knowing that I'm fighting a horse-sized duck, I'm going to analyze the situation, figure out his weak points, maybe hit those hit those fins because they're kind of skinny. They got skinny ankles. Horses got big ankles, but I mean, if you're talking, it's just the size of a uh, horse. It's not. It doesn't have the muscular composition of a horse. So we got skinny ankles. Go for the ankles. Take out those feet, just Star Wars style. Just wrap a wire around them and then trip them up. But they can always fly. So, oh man, that that battle is going to be intense. However, I feel like I would be able to fight it enough to the point where I would tame it. And then you know exactly where I'm going with this: Daenerys and Night King style. Spoilers. If you haven't watched the Game of Thrones season finale, if you haven't watched it, then pff, what fucking rock are you living under? But if I'm able to tame this duck-sized horse, or horse-sized duck, I always get those confused. It's it's very confusing. Horse-sized duck to the point where I'm riding it and flying around, not to mention, bang, bang, bang. I mean, you probably thought there was a duck in the mic. So I could probably communicate with it and calm it down and try and get it on my side and then kind of go in for like a like a bullfighting thing where I just grab it, grab it by the head, and ooh, my hair, hair got a little crazy there. Grab by the head and try to tame it and try to ride it because if it was a hundred hundred horse sized ducks, no duck sized horses, I'm gonna always get that confused no matter what. I would tire out and I wouldn't even I would just give up eventually because there's no way I'm gonna be pulling off a hundred kicks, especially at the rapid fire that they're coming at you. It's just not possible. It's, in a hypothetical situation or not, it's just, you're not doing it. It's just not possible. So. I know that I would suffer defeat with the 100 uh, duck-sized horses, but with a horse-sized duck, I would approach it a very different way. I wouldn't go for the defeat. I wouldn't go for the victory. I would go for the control. Defeat him enough, injure him enough to the point where if you're ever playing any video game where you're taming an animal or you're trying to control something, you get them down just enough, just a little bit, so they're, they're not powerful enough to attack you, but then you move in. Maybe I don't even try and tame it like with aggression. Maybe I just kind of damage it to the point where it's kind of like flopping around. It's not able to fly and it's kind of injured a little bit. And then I go up to it and kind of caress it. I'm just like, hey, little ducky or big ass super ducky that I'm super freaked out about because I've never seen a horse-sized duck before. Just calm down. I beat you. The fight's over. Just come to my side. Fight for the good guys and, you know, let me ride you and fly around. And I'll take you to the lake. You can bob your head, stick your tushy in the air. Bob for some fish or Bob for some minnows. Or if you're a horse-sized duck, then you're going to be eating fucking sharks at that point. But yeah, that, that's how I would approach it. Just kind of the passive way. Because, you know, I, I'm not one for violence. I like to, to solve, solve things with diplomacy and politics. So I'd want to reason with the duck. The hundred, the hundred horse-sized or duck-sized horses. I mean, there's no reason with them. They're just a bunch of just duck-sized horses just coming at you and they have no reason they have no logic they're just trying to attack you i mean there's a hundred of them and you see a hundred of those like i said there's no ants they're ducks like they're horses that are about the size i mean they're not small and there's a hundred of them just fuck me i don't even have a choice but yeah that's that's my answer and and it's very important it's going to go down in the history books as one of the most important ama questions and answers in particular in the history of AMA, ama so tanner i hope that answer was suffice for your AMA question. And remember, if you want to get in our next AMA comment response video, go to patreon.com slash T-J-E-N-T where you can donate one, two, five, or $10 and get your question in. Label it just AMA and designate it whether you want Tom or me or both of us to answer it and you get yourself on the show. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There are the comments and responses that I wanted to respond to and wanted to give you guys a little feedback. And I just wanted to connect with the viewer because although we might not have a lot of viewers... We might not have a lot of views. We're still getting likes. We still got five other Patreon supporters. Two out of the seven are uh, Tom and me, full disclosure. But we still have viewers. We still have people that are giving us feedback, texting us up, saying, hey, I like you guys, what you're doing with the show. It's really great. And we cannot appreciate all the support, whether it's a like, a view, a comment, anything that you do at all. Tell your friends. Maybe show off your sticker a little bit. Oh, also, full disclosure, Miss Christie, if you're still watching this, we are going to send you out stickers this week. We've kind of been busy the last few days. And we're going to start sending out stickers this week to all Patreon supporters as well. So this week or at the latest next week so I don't disappoint anybody. So yeah, donate, pay, donate on Patreon. Get yourself a question on the AMA. Get these six stickers. Other rewards like getting the show Real Talk with Tom and Joey early on every Tuesday instead of waiting each day for each specific topic and then waiting till Friday to get the full episode. Maybe you want to listen to it all in one bunch. 
You can do that if you donate to Patreon as well. So yeah, there you have it. There is our AMA for August 2017. I am one of your hosts of Real Talk with Tom and Joey, Joey Prokes, and I hope you enjoyed our feedback, and we look forward to the many, many months ahead. We're going to keep pushing out our best possible content that we can possibly do, possibly times two, and we hope you enjoy it. So as always, we will see you next week or tomorrow for Real Talk Episode 9, Topic 2. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace.